Hi, I'm Christopher Putnam. I'm the Assistant Grand Organist of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons in the state of California. And I'm also a professional musician, a church organist, concert organist, and all sorts of other things along the way. And we're here today to talk about the SD Pipe Organ, Opus 2639, at the Scottish Rite Temple in Oakland, California. The SD Organ Company was one of America's largest musical instrument builders for over a hundred years. Beginning in the 1850s, the SD Organ Company of Brattleboro, Vermont, started building reed organs. Reed organs are like big harmonicas or accordions, and they're a different kind of instrument from pipe organs. Over the next hundred plus years, the SD Company built over half a million reed organs for churches, homes, concert halls, Masonic lodges, and everything else you can think of. Over the next 59 years, they built over 3,200 pipe organs. This one is in the 2600s, and it was dedicated on December 12th, 1927. It's inherently part of this building. That's part of what makes it so special. It's an orchestral style organ. It's a little different from theater organs, but it has some things in common with them. It's a little different from church organs of the time, but it has a lot in common with them. An organ like this is unique in that it's in the same building it was originally built for. It's part of the architecture, it's part of the fabric of the building, and clearly was designed to be an integral part of this great space. Most theater organs are not in their original homes. In the 50s, 60s, even into the 70s and 80s, as older theaters were torn down, many of the organs were simply destroyed, others were removed and put together by hobbyists who really appreciated those old instruments. Places like the Paramount Theater in Oakland have a wonderful pipe organ that they use for public events very often, but it's not the original organ from the building. Same thing for the Castro Theater, where every single movie is preceded by organ music. Again, it's a wonderful Wurlitzer put together from different instruments from different buildings. The Stanford Theater in Palo Alto is one of the few that has the original instrument in the original building. And we're in that kind of position here with this SD organ. This instrument, as you'll see, has four manuals or keyboards controlling about 30 different ranks of pipes. A rank is a set of pipes from bottom to top. It's hard to tell without actually going in and physically counting, but it means that we're looking at about 2,200 individual pipes they range from 16 feet in length to as short as three-eighths of an inch of speaking sound from the pipe. The pipe itself may be six inches long or so, but only the top part of it counts. So we're looking at a huge range of variety. Pipes are made out of wood, also out of various combinations of tin, zinc, and lead. As I mentioned, this console has four manuals or keyboards. It has a really unusual style of stop controls. Those are the, all the knobs that actually control which pipes play when. This is called the luminous style of console design, and it was unique to SD. The first time I ever played an organ with lighted stop controls was in about 1990. SD was 60 years ahead of its time by using this design. But it was much more complex then than it was by the 90s with solid state and microprocessor controlling. Every one of these is controlled by lots and lots of wires inside the console. I'm going to turn it on now, and you may hear the organ coming to life as the bellows fill with air and the pipes are ready to speak. There are lots of controls back there, and we, all man we manage it from here. From back here, we get a really great view of one of the pipe chests, including some of the different kinds of pipes. You can see some wooden ones in there. You can see some of the reed pipes, the party horn type pipes I was talking about. And here are some very small flue pipes, the regular sort of whistle pipes. There are some very large ones way off to the right here, and some very small ones. We're standing at the back of the great pipe chamber now. We're right behind the largest pipes in the organ. They're about eight feet long, from speaking opening at the bottom to the very top. And then because they have caps in them, the sound waves are doubled in length 
making them sound at what's called 16-foot pitch. If we had an open pipe, it would be 16 feet long. But because they're wooden pipes, they're only eight feet long from top to bottom, but they make a deeper sound. And this is the basis underneath the whole rest of the organ. So now we're back at really what's the brains of the organ, the relays. This is where all the wires come only to go back out. So we have wires coming from the console into the relays here, and then they spread back out. I don't really know how all this works. I play them, but it's like my car. When it's out of oil, I don't know what's going wrong. I just know I need to call someone to fix it. We have all these individually hand-wired, hand-soldered relays going on. And we can see beautiful craftsmanship and attention to detail, even in the smallest parts. Right now, um, you can see in front, it used to have large louvers or shades in front of it that would allow the volume to change. Those have long since been removed, but they were part of the original plan. When you play an organ pipe, it sounds at one volume for as long as you hold the note. So the only way to control the volume of the organ is to turn pipes on and off, or to actually have louvers that allow more or less sound in and out of the organ chamber. There are lots of things going on in the organ itself, and we're controlling them all from here. As you can see, some of these stop tabs light up when they're pressed. That should mean that they play. Some of them don't light up when they're pressed, and to be honest, we don't know whether that means they play or not, because this organ is limping along, frankly. But some of the stops work, and we're able to play with some of what's here. One of the keyboards, the choir, we can't use at all because it has this big warning note for a cipher, or a note that sticks. So that if we play that note, we then have to cancel the whole organ just to get that one pipe to stop from speaking. It's inconvenient and takes out a lot of our firepower. Each keyboard controls one section of the organ, and then they can all be combined in various ways. Underneath the keys, are these large buttons that are numbered, and those can be set individually to preset combinations of stops that come on. It's the way the organist can control the whole organ at once and make a lot of changes very quickly. These don't work anymore either, so everything we do, we have to do by hand. We owe it to the unknown craftsmen who built these instruments to honor them by honoring their work. It's what we do as masons. We have woodworkers, metallurgists, electrical engineers, architects, all sorts of people with skills beyond what any one of us can do coming together to build instruments like this. An apprenticeship kind of program is exactly how they were built, and it's exactly the kind of thing that we as Masons can be supporting. But it's the kind of thing that also requires incredible skill and expertise leading the way and that's not cheap. I don't know what it's gonna to take to work with this instrument, but I guarantee you, it's worth it.